So, as I said, it didn't actually take that long for me to complete The Legend of Takeda story. It uh, took less than an hour. <laughs> uh, around the, uh, by, by the time I finished, I was pretty much uh, watching a, a stream, uh, ate my dinner, uh, and while it is the next day, technically, um, it didn't actually take all that long to complete the story. And I did play in easy mode, so, uh, and I could definitely tell that the experience rate that I earn for characters in easy mode is far less than what I would earn in normal and consequently hard mode, because I think, like, uh, I'm not going to show it off, but, uh, the characters that I used in the Takata storyline, their, their levels were, uh, pretty low compared to Kobayakawa and Motonari when I finished their first stage. Like, Motonari and, Go and, and Kobayakawa are, like, I think level 10 or something and meanwhile I hit level 10 by the time I got to the third stage <laughs> with the characters and the dog at a starting line so didn't actually take all that long but uh yeah I rested I ate some dinner now let's watch a train wreck <laughs> which is the battle of Okahizama on the Tokugawa side because as we know from the uh Oda storyline the Tokugawa along with the Imagawa lost this battle, so let's see where where they're gonna end up. A threatening shadow looms at Okehazama. The age of a land led by Ieyasu Tokugawa is about to begin. Well, spoiler alert, game. <laughs> we don't even know anything about the Tokugawa before you spout out that idea. Well, just like the other storylines we're playing on hard mode so let us continue with that oh i just noticed the difficulty is actually three star as opposed to oda which was one star and consequently shikoku which was one star as well like you can definitely tell that this is a story that you're supposed to play after you've unlocked it so you're supposed to know the game by this point good to know good to know all right hard mode let's go so is it palanquin or palanquin? I always pronounce it as palanquin. <laughs> Treats him like a baby. Again, it's so weird how this interpretation of Yoshimoto is just like completely brain dead. He's almost like a child. And it's been that way ever since Samurai Wars 1. It's always just been this depiction of Yoshimoto. Until this game. Because something weird happens here. What are you, a demon? And also a prophet, apparently? That's right, I read the script of this game. I know exactly what's going to happen. This is my reaction to reading the, my death. Yeah, so... Just casually reverts back to his quote-unquote normal personality? But for a minute there, he had this, like, demonic presence, almost as if he knew what was going to happen to the future of not only his clan, but also Ieyasu's. I never really understood that scene. Like, it really felt like they were trying to portray Yoshimoto as a big threat, which is what he's supposed to be. The Daimyo of Mikawa! <laughs> I just remember Ieyasu saying it like that in uh, Samurai Wars 2. Yeah, the problem is Ieyasu was uh, one of the vassals underneath Imagawa, so he had no choice but to join in this campaign, despite the fact that he did have uh, connections to the Oda. As we know from the last battle, uh, him and Nobunaga used to play when he was a boy. <laughs> Otherwise known as the Fool. The Fool of Owari. Having known Nobunaga since he was a boy, Ieyasu sensed a frightening darkness in him. 
Was that darkness always there, or... <laughs> was he always this maniacal madman, even as a child? Did he laugh all the time whenever he was a child? Whenever you asked him a question, Ieyasu, was his only response, Is that so? So nano ka. Was he a cannibal, Ieyasu? Did he eat meat? Did he have the powers of darkness? You know, now that I say that, he does have the power of darkness. Maybe him and Rumia from Toho have more in common than I realized. <laughs> Anyways, um, Tokugawa has access to four characters at the beginning, uh, as opposed to the other two stories. We are going to try out Ieyasu Tokugawa since he's, you know, the name-worthy character of this story. And we can either go with now Tora Ie, uh, one of the members of the Ie clan. And funnily enough, I mentioned this in the uh, last battle of Okazama. She eventually becomes the daimyo and the one in charge of the Ie clan after her father dies or is killed in this battle. We have Hanzo Hatori, who is a famous ninja, ninja employed by the Tokugawa. They are pre the, the Hatori. Is it Tori? I think it's Hanzo. I forget which is their family name. I think the Hatori clan? Because they have Hatori in the same place as Honda and Ie and Tokugawa, so. The, the Hatori ninjas, or Iga ninjas, I think they're supposed to be uh, known as, were uh, ninjas employed by the Tokugawa and. Hanzo is apparently the leader, at least from what I remember. <laughs> and we have Tarakatsu Honda. Uh, this is basically the Lubu of this era. And if you don't know who Lubu is, uh, Dynasty Warriors, he's basically the big, strong uh, warrior who no one wants to challenge because he's literally the strongest guy in existence. <laughs> Tarakatsu is basically that. Except, in my opinion, I think he's uh, much better than Lubu historically. <laughs> He also has uh, a Samurai Warriors costume because he was in the original Samurai Warriors, albeit the expansion. So, weird design. <laughs> Never personally really liked his original Samurai Warriors design where he looked more like a demon uh, with a demonic Oni head on his back for some reason. But he always has his signature beads wrapped around him. I personally really like his design in this game. Also because I can't really tell if that white hair is supposed to be his actual hair or if it's just extensions. If it's his real hair, then that's pretty cool. <laughs> Hanzo was also in the original game. In this one, he looks like a uh, medieval Power Ranger villain, and I'm not really sure I am a fan of this design. Uh, in the original, he's straight up just Scorpion. <laughs> he's Purple Scorpion. He's, uh, he's Smoke or Rain or whichever one was a uh, purple color in Mortal Kombat. I personally really like his uh, Samurai Warriors 2 and even Samurai Warriors 5 design, even if his Samurai Warriors 5 design makes him look less like a, a like an ancient ninja and more like a Bishonen ninja. Then again, I am a sucker for Bishonen, so. Now Tor EA is Sex Appeal. <laughs> this was the first game that she appears in and uh, she does have costumes, but that's only because she's a female. So we have a towel outfit, of course. And the furry outfit, in case you're into that. I'm just gonna go with the normal outfit, thank you very much. And yeah, also surprisingly, doesn't have outfits. Uh, they gave outfits to all the characters who were in the original Samurai Warriors, and Ieyasu wasn't one of them. And then they gave a bunch of costumes to the females, and I think Yukimura, because he's the poster child. Other than that, most of the other characters don't really have anything else to go with. Uh, it's kind of a shame. I guess this game didn't have as many DLC costumes as Dynasty Warriors did, which is a little weird, but eh. Anyways, I'm kind of harping uh, a little too long. Um, we are going to go with Hanzo Hattori, but before we do that... <laughs> Get used to her saying that a lot. We're gonna choose now Tora and Tadakatsu to see if they have a cutscene. Surprisingly, no, okay. <laughs> I was thinking they'd have a cutscene uh, that portrayed them right before the battle. And Ieyasu and Hanzo don't. Okay then. <laughs> so I did actually use some of these uh, mounts when I was playing through the other stories. 
I probably won't use them here. Yeah, I was only using them just so I could get through the Takata story as fast as possible. And I did also unlock the shop so we can transfer weapons to different characters. So if I want to bring in uh, the weapons that I got for the Takata characters that are actually like really good and have a lot of skills on them and give them to Ieyasu and Hanzo, I could, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this as like pseudo new as possible so we're starting at level one we're starting with the base items that we get from other stories not gonna trade weapons and not gonna get any mounts so this is just how we're gonna do it <laughs> so uh, as opposed to how the um how nobunaga's version of okayazama was we are at a huge advantage in this map but as you probably remember, that's going to change in just a little bit. And also, we don't see Nobunaga on this map either. Our victory conditions are to defeat Nobunaga, but he isn't there. And the defeat condition is either Yoshimoto or Ieyasu Tokugawa is defeated. I think that's probably going to change in the middle of the battle. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. Also, one of my favorite uh, Samurai Wars 4 tracks in this game. I, I personally really like this song. Uh called lightning strike tokugawa version again whenever a whenever two clans have a shared battle they usually have different uh remixes of the song so lightning strike oda version was like a dark uh trap song with oriental instruments this one is like trance trance techno in a way and it also portrays how Ieyasu sort of feels about this battle. It seems like he's not really into it all that much. But he's still grooving, apparently. <laughs> so we gotta escort the supply soldiers to Odaka Castle. Alright, good thing we had Ieyasu down here. Hanzo's not really gonna be doing much up there, because there's not really much for him to do. I specifically like the uh, drop of the song at this part. It's like, whoever thought to give uh, the Tokugawa a sort of trance techno uh, feel to their orchestra, to their OST, good decision. <laughs> it sounds really, really good. Anyways, Ieyasu's weapon is a little weird. He uses this sort of, like, lance cannon that acts as both a giant lance and a cannonball launcher. Never really knew how to feel about it. It's a cool weapon. It just doesn't really feel Ieyasu-like to me. I don't know, Ieyasu seems a lot more cunning. But then again, he is known as Tanuki in history, so he's uh, he's supposed to be heavy. So his weapon being this heavy and big probably makes the most amount of sense. Also, speaking of heavy, these guys are completely ignoring me. They're going for the supply soldiers. Stop them! <laughs> Muso is kind of... Eh. I didn't mention this when we were playing. Oh! Hanzo, you're here! He actually made it all the way down here. Okay, we gotta stop that guy all the way over there. Yeah, these guys are really going after the supply soldiers. They're not allowing us to have a good time with this. You are the shining light on these dark days. I trust you 100%, random ninja. <laughs> it's not a random ninja, though. Hanzo is uh, one of the most dedicated officers to Ieyasu. I don't know the historical uh, relevancy of Hanzo, but he is well known as the Tokugawa's ninja in most media. Alright, so Hanzo has access to Shadow Clones because, of course, he's a ninja. <laughs> I really do like the, sh the way the Shadow Clones work, though, because they, they are essentially doppelgangers. So if you're using the hyper attack, you have like three Hanzos rushing around all over the place. Anyways, this battle's actually 
the beginning of this battle has actually proven to be a bit difficult because these supply soldiers constantly get hit. So we need to make sure the, this particular supply soldier gets to the end. Yeah, I didn't mention this when I was playing Nobunaga's story, but um, Nobunaga's Muso I'm not really a big fan of because of the fact that he rushes around all over the place, and it makes it really difficult to hit things. Alright, we got the supply soldiers here. Thank goodness. Nope, not yet. <laughs> we still have one. You know, you guys can make it any minute now. <laughs> there we go, we did it. Well, that was good. Anyways, I'm going to check to see what the moveset is, because I completely forgot to do that. Alright, so Hanzo is a hyper-attack-oriented character, so hyper-attacks are his thing. Uh, special skill, create a shadow double and coordinate your attacks, which is really, really good. And Ieyasu's is repeatedly fire cannonballs. Uh, not bad at all. I'll probably have to use that, because I didn't actually get a chance to use it. Oh, literally just hold down the button and he just constantly fires. Okay, that... Very simple. Hmm, some of them actually showed up. Who are these guys? We have Koheta Hatori. Wait, Hatori? Huh, a fellow Hatori member. I'm guessing, is there any significance to that? We got a Mori and a Yanada. Well, just because people are part of the same clan doesn't necessarily mean that they are knowledgeable of each other, or maybe they're not of the same uh, lineage. <laughs> well, yes, they're, they're part of the same lineage, but they're probably not part of the same creed. Wait, that's basically the same thing. They're, they're, they're not in league with the same vassals. <laughs> that's, that's a better way to put it. Alright, let's try this attack. Uh, literally just rain a volley of cannonballs at the enemies. Literally don't allow them to get up. Okay, that's the, this is the I win button apparently. Oh, I guess Ieyasu runs out of uh, cannonballs at, at, after a certain amount of time. I wonder if there's a specific amount that you can use. Like, does, does it build up after a while? Do you need to defeat a couple enemies before you uh, recharge it? Like, let's see. Still seems to be shooting, although the rate seems to be getting slower. Interesting. Yeah, these characters are really interesting to play as. It is fun playing as different characters in this game because each of them, while they do feel the same in terms of the you know typical Muso gameplay, you know you got you got your normal tag, you got your combos. Typical Muso, Dynasty Warriors, High Warriors, you play them all, then you basically know the gist. But this game gives a lot of characters some unique differences, like the special attacks, and even the fact that some characters have like different uh, different specialties. Like Hanzo is a. Uh... Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm a minor daimyo under Imagawa. Oh, she's currently a uh, she's currently the daimyo right now, apparently. Sumimasu. Yeah, she's she's kind of the shy type. <laughs> my hearing is good. I can hear you loud and clear. Shut up. <laughs> I am doing my work. <laughs> now, can you please tell me now, Tora, where is the closest karaoke bar? <laughs> I need to meet a couple friends there. If you know, you know. <laughs> oh wow, Ieyasu was actually very close to taking this guy out. Okay, his hyper attack isn't bad, but he's just very, very slow when he uses it. Well, so far, things are looking pretty good for us. Although they have locked us out of the top right over there. Oh, uh, yep, because... This was right before the ambush. Literally everything goes to shit immediately. Oh, 
Yep, all the people that we face were just a diversion. Dealing with the supply soldiers was a diversion. Oh, Hanzo is actually about to die. Hanzo, what are you doing up here? <laughs> what are you doing? Get out of here! Oh, that actually gave me an achievement. Imagawa main camp is open. Well, we gotta do something about that. If we don't make it there soon, uh, Yoshimoto is... Well, who are we kidding? Yoshimoto's gonna die. <laughs> Ensure that Ieyasu Tokugawa reaches the Imagawa main camp. Oh, we gotta... We gotta switch to uh, Ieyasu as fast as possible. No, well, they're really not giving us any time. Hanzo, you're probably just gonna have to deal with this guy. I know it's difficult for you, but just continue. This mission gives us money if we complete it. Even if we don't complete it, that's fine. And considering it's taking us a really long time to cross this, I don't think we're gonna make it. Oh man, we're not gonna make it. 30 seconds have passed. We failed our lord. I wonder what would have happened if we actually made it. I mean, we would have just gotten money, but... You know, for someone who has a demonic personality like that, you'd think they wouldn't have died that easily. Yoshimoto Imagawa has been slain. Yeah, so unlike most uh, other games in the franchise, both Samurai and Dynasty, this game takes uh, historical accuracy very seriously. Well, at the very least, as much as these games do. <laughs> so, Yoshimoto is always going to die. There is no what-if scenario unless you play the DLCs. So we're gonna we're gonna be going through the same gist as the Oda version of Okehazama. Which means we are now at a severe disadvantage. We're basically playing the opposite version of Oda, of how the Oda played out. Where we were completely uh, outnumbered and outmanned at the beginning of the battle, but as soon as we killed Yoshimoto, everyone panicked. Our army was at the highest it could be. It was literally a bloody massacre for the Imagawa. But now we are the Imagawa, well, the Tokugawa, technically. But we are their force. And now we have to stop the Oda from, at the very least, murdering everyone who's left. So it was originally going to be a simple, easy battle. Has now turned into a survival of the fittest. Okay, Hizama has pretty much just become a bloodbath. Oh, hey, Tokugawa, or Tadakatsu. It's Tadakatsu Wanda. My lord, you are a shining star. Speaking of which, I found the karaoke bar. Allow me to sing you a melody. Shining star. <laughs> Hanzo, not now. <laughs> yeah, Tadakatsu has a lot of very loyal vassals on his side. Both, uh... Tadakatsu... Wait, did I say Tadakatsu? Uh, Ieyasu has a lot of uh, loyal vassals on his side. Tadakatsu Honda and Hanzo Hattori. And it also helps that they're very powerful. So Ieyasu is a normal attack-oriented character. So similar to uh, Kobayakawa, he has a very long normal attack string. I would show it off, but for now we need to... We need to deal with all these guys over here. Because Jesus Christ, things are going horribly wrong over here. We might need to make use of our spirit gauge. I know, right? Sometimes I can't take my eyes off of uh, off of the Yakuza man over here. <laughs> I haven't played the Yakuza series yet. I do own uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, specifically the one with uh, Ichiban as the protagonist. But I haven't actually played any with um, what the fuck is his name, the protagonist of most of the games. I don't. Again, I'm not the Yakuza person <laughs> in my friend group. Uh, but I do know that Hanzo is voiced by that guy. 
And it is pretty obvious when you hear his uh, voice. Oh wow, they're actually fighting Keiji over there. The battle against Keiji and Tadakatsu actually sounds pretty cool. Just gotta kill this guy fast. Alright. We cannot stay here anymore. Oh, there you are, Keiji. Oh gosh, he didn't like my cannonball. Where do you go, Hanzo? Where? Why do you go where I cannot follow? Wait, can he actually make it? No, he can't. <laughs> I love those sumo wrestlers just with their palms up as the giant cannibals were raining from the sky. They were, they were, they were frozen still. Wait, Tadakatsu Honda has been defeated? Oh my gosh. We actually lost Tadakatsu Honda in this battle. That shouldn't have happened. My ally officers has been defeated. Do not let any more ally officers be defeated. All right, looks like we gotta, we gotta do this fast. Oh, no you don't. Where are you, buddy? I can't find him. Oh yeah, when you when you don't use a muso with your uh, rate with your rage meter, you just do a uh, animation. <laughs> All right, we need to get rid of the standard bear. So many things are going wrong right now. Yeah, so you go down there. Defeat Katsuie Shibata and Toshie Maeda and rescue Motunobu Okabe. Okay, we need to we need to save him. Then that's probably gonna have to be our first destination. Ieyasu, however, is not dealing with that guy very well. First things first, get rid of the standard bear. He's causing everyone to have very high defense. This girl over here. This girl. <laughs> okay, now more Ie has reached the escape point. Wait, isn't that her father? <laughs> Alright, looks like we're gonna have to pull out a rage again. Man, we are making really big use of our rage in this battle. Let's bring out our ninjas! Our ninja copies! Oh, and we actually got a Musa right as it ended. Awesome! Oh, we didn't actually kill Katsuya. yet. The allies are being held back. Alright, uh, Ieyasu, you're gonna have to go and help this guy, because I don't want him to get defeated. I know your health isn't looking too good. Thankfully, we're making quick work of the castle over here. Oh, as if, as if it wasn't enough dealing with Katsuie and Toshie, now No has showed up. And Oichi. No, what is it that you desire? <laughs> I want the world. I want the whole world. I mean, pretty much. <laughs> Oh, damn it, we lost somebody. Yeah, this battle is supposed to be really, really difficult at this point. Alright. Oichi and No are at the bottom, which means they're cutting off the escape point. Uh, Hidetaka is not battling anyone at the moment, so Hanzo, you're probably going to have to go deal with uh, Oichi for now. Eos has got this guy up here. Perhaps you should return home. Well, we still have some allies that we need to meet. Oh, he also wants to meet up with Nobunaga. Yeah, if you do, it's probably not going to look good for Nobunaga. 
Oh gosh, we're battling Oishi over there. <laughs> That's not good. He's basically saying the exact same thing that he did in uh, his story. Ieyasu, your disappointment. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to have big balls. You are a tanuki after all, right? <laughs> Yeah, despite the fact that they were supposed to have a small number of troops in the actual historical battle, they surprisingly have more than we bargained for. Defeat Hideyoshi Hashiba. Oh, so we have to defeat Hideyoshi as to, to end the battle. Uh-oh. No has entered Okada Castle. We need to save uh, whoever is there. Man, there are so many enemies all over the place. And we need to make sure five officers do not get defeated. Oichi's not really fighting anyone over here, but I still want to get rid of her. Oh gosh, that's not good. Oichi was really kicking our ass there for a second. And she kind of is already. She still is. Is there any food here? Any food libraries? Any food libraries whatsoever? Okay, there's some. Nice. We are allowing most of our uh, compatriots to escape, so that's good. There we go. Did Oichi just vanish? Where the heck did Oichi go? I guess we defeated her. All right, Hanzo, make it up there and protect our allies. Now Tor Ie is still up there. Oh, Oichi actually just ran all the way over here. She took the advantage. She took the initiative of the castle being uh, raided. Well, my ninja's useless. If you have a job for a ninja, you gotta do it yourself. Not good, not good. And we don't have a character that can heal, so... <laughs> there are a couple of characters that can heal in this game. Man, this is a good opportunity to have one. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, characters like Ieyasu that only have, like, one uh, power attack string... Their power attacks are usually pretty good. Just gotta find the right one. Yes, yes, I know everyone is struggling at this point. This really is a three-star battle at this time. Oh, that, that's a nice camera view right there of no. <laughs> 100%. Oh, yeah. Alright, uh... Yeah, we really need to defeat all these guys as fast as possible. All right, now, Tora, you with me. Ninja and female daimyo. <laughs> this is certainly a fantasy pairing in the making. Oh, we have two officers here, actually. Oh, great. One of them got defeated. One of our officers got defeated. We need to make sure two more don't get defeated. At least the battle conditions aren't too strict. This is still possible. Even though Tadakatsu Honda is struggling. I thought he was defeated. <laughs> oh, Tadakatsu, you are all over the place in this battle, apparently. Okay, we really need to do something about this. Even though our morale is extremely high, despite the fact that our leader has been killed, and most of our people are now dead... <laughs> people are still dying. What's the matter, everybody? We're all in good spirits! Hanzo... Everyone is dead. <laughs> yeah, so? <laughs> Well, that's decent, but it doesn't do that much damage. 
Oh, great. All right. I think we might have to cut our losses at this point. We, we might just have to go for Hideyoshi. If one more officer dies, that's it. I have failed in my attempt to repay Lord Yoshimoto's favor. Oh, Tadakata Honda should not be struggling. We need to do something about this fast. Do I just... Do I just go for uh, Hideyoshi? I don't know. Where's, uh, where's Tadakatsu? Okay, Tadakatsu Honda is low on health. If I leave this guy, though... No, we don't want to protect. We'll have to wait where Tadakatsu is. That's the only way we can do this. If someone waits right next to him, he might get a small healing boost. Hopefully. Alright, yeah, yeah, so you're gonna have to be the one. You're gonna have to be the one to defeat Hideyoshi. If he can't do it fast enough, Tadakatsu dies and it's all over. Literally, first stage and it's already pulling out all the stops. This is why I really like hard mode. Despite the fact that this is really difficult to manage, I am having a lot of fun doing this. If I have to redo this, I don't mind. Uh, Tadakatsu! Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Oh my gosh! Tadakatsu is so low on health! We need to make sure he's okay! Yeah, so remember when I said this guy is supposed to be the Lubu of this series? We need to do this fast. We need to do this fast. Come on. Go all out. We only have a couple seconds left. We did it. <coughs> Please tell me that was enough. Please tell me we don't have to do anything else. Oh no, there's still more. What else do we have to do? No, but is not going ahead. I am going in. Oh, thank goodness. I think that's all. <gasps> we did it! Oh my gosh. What a battle. That was like... One of the most... Difficult battles I've had so far. Like, of course, nothing difficult was happening at all in the Takata storyline. Uh, the Mori story was really easy. It was a tutorial stage. Oda, tutorial. So, of course, it was supposed to be easy. You were supposed to be on this, like, adrenaline high of, oh my gosh, the beginning was so, you know, it was, it looks so impossible. But at the end, you, you conquered the impossible. And so everything became easy after Yoshimoto was killed. This is like running for your life and trying to survive the unfortunate onslaught of death itself. Even though we didn't get to Lord Yoshimoto in time and we did have a couple of things unlocked to us, uh, I think we did pretty well. <laughs> Especially since I didn't have any weapons on these guys. I think the game expected me to have weapons on them. I will definitely be doing that for the next stage I play for this story. <laughs> Specifically for the Tokugawa story. Mm. Hanzo's looking pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I completely forgot that there were locked uh, skills for weapons. It's been far too long that I played this game. I, they probably always had that, but I just never noticed. Also, something that you guys have probably noticed, uh, there's a level 1 indicated on these items. Yes, uh... There are, I believe, level 2 and level 3 variants of each item, and they have uh, bigger uh, values. So, eventually we'll be able to unlock those, I just need to remember how. <laughs> but every time we do get a duplicate of an item, it automatically sells it. 
Anyways, hello, Tanuki. I'm sorry, I should say it in the uh, Samurai Warriors 2 English dub Nobunaga voice. Hello, Tanuki. If you've come here to kill me, then do it. <laughs> Not exactly. Oh, my bad. <laughs> How dare I cut Nobunaga off? Yeah, that worthless wasn't towards the Ayasu, that was towards me. That was a nice bridge. Oh my gosh, she has the same... He has the same energy as Orochimaru does. Like, freezing people in place with his stern demeanor. Nobunaga is portrayed as a demon king for a reason. Well, it just means that you won't have to rely on the Imagawa anymore, and you won't be forced to do what they want to do. You're now your own daimyo of your own land. It may be small, but you're not taken over by someone, at least just yet. <laughs> We're just here for the ride, my lord. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that is a thing, actually. Uh, even though Yoshimoto did die, he did have a successor. So Ujizane, Yoshi U Ujizane Imagawa is now the leader of the clan. Unfortunately, he's kind of incompetent and an idiot. So now that I think about it, the interpretation that Yoshimoto has in Samurai Warriors, specifically this game and earlier iterations, is exactly what Ujizani is supposed to be. This bumbling idiot who only likes to play Kamari Ball all day and doesn't really care about war and battle, isn't really much of a strategist. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird how they just gave him his son's personality. <laughs> Yeah, he also doesn't seem the type. But that may unfortunately be the downfall of the Tokugawa. <laughs> He's still a softy. Samurai Warriors 5 really made me appreciate some characters, specifically Hanzo, Tadakatsu, and Ieyasu, and their three-way relationship of Ieyasu being the young lord at this time, and both Hanzo and Tadakatsu being sort of like surrogate fathers in a way. <laughs> it, it's a genuinely sweet relationship that you get in that game. And again, I, I, I mentioned this in the Oda storyline. But it really helps that the game starts and takes place far before the Battle of Okahizama even happened. So it takes place when Nobunaga was a, was a teen, I think, when he was a young ruler. And the first chapter, which is like multiple stages, builds up to the Battle of Okahizama. And the entire game is basically just Nobunaga's life. So it builds up Ieyasu as this young leader, this young lord that is uh, taken care of by his vassals. It treats Nobunaga as this like sympathetic figure who we later learn like the repercussions and actions that he goes through and what affects the land in general and what makes him into what he is now known as the Demon Lord. <laughs> Anyways, now Tora Ie here. She apparently heard everything that we were talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she sounds like a squeaky toy. <laughs> she, she's one of those characters with those high-pitched voices. Yeah, it kind of sucks being a female daimyo and having lost your father and possibly other clansmen. 
So now she's pretty much on her own. <laughs> At least you two have something in common. Must be a virus. I sure hope it's not the plague. Good question. Hmm. Well, all good medicine is better. <laughs> well, he's not wrong. <laughs> At the very least, they're bonding. And it seems like this could be a good start to a uh, good relationship between both of their clans. Like, you look at that smile on Ieyasu's portrait, and it very much is like a, an innocent and genuine smile. As Hanzo and Tadagatsu mentioned, he is very virtuous. Despite how much you guys struggle on what the right decision even is. Hmm. Tazu of the Ilo. Or specifically Tazu of the Io. I don't exactly know who that is. I've never actually heard of that term before. Well, I'm definitely saving that for later. <laughs> Just to research it. You are now able to play as Hanzo Hattori in free mode. And Yoshimo Yoshimoto Imagawa. And Tadakatsu Honda. And Ieyasu Takagawa. Yeah, we unlocked some characters because we didn't actually have them available. Uh, so yeah, that is the end of the Battle of Okehazama. As we saw from both sides, the Oda army has performed a miracle and has survived the giant onslaught of the Imagawa army. And it seems like they've basically halted any sort of progress that the Imagawa will ever have to claiming the land now that they've lost their competent leader. Meanwhile, the Tokugawa, who were in league with the Imagawa against their will, have now lost their leader, well specifically have lost the clan leader that they were uh, working for, and now the Tokugawa of Mikawa have no one else to turn to. So what will they be doing? Well, we'll just have to find out after this. And whatever this meeting between Nobunaga and Ieyasu will lead to, well, again, we'll just have to find that out next time. So. Join me next time for the next battle, which I believe will be the first stage for the Hojo clan, the Legend of Kanto. So, and as I just remembered, after this battle, we're going to have to uh, do another off-screen playthrough of a clan to unlock the Uesugi. Because the, the, the Hojo clan are fighting the Uesugi. Oh, look at that. I had to play through the entirety of the Kanto uh, missions. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do that after I complete the Kanto mission, because at the very least, I won't have to replay one of them. <laughs> so, join me next time for that. Uh, I believe this is going to be a Monday part, so hope you guys have a good week and expect more parts. So, see you then. Bye.